then start system. Thank you, Vedan. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your presence. We have gathered here to listen to your word. As we listen, our minds are being renewed. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us the scriptures, giving us the revelation knowledge. This is transforming our life as we meditate on God's word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, to be in the presence of God most important in our life to be in the presence of God, to meditate, to ponder, to change the way we think, the way we speak, applying the principles of God which transforms the life, a complete transformation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for God is our source. God is our wisdom. He is the way, he is the, he is the path, he is our destination. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your precious blood. Thank you for the promises that you had given us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for transforming our life and making us being a blessing to others. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. This gospel has transformed, changed our life. There is power. There is power in God's word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us the principle to speak life, to speak the promises, to bring into existence God's desires, God's plan. As we dwell in the presence of God, we will fulfill the desires of God. Our desires becomes God's desires. Thank you, Lord. Each and each one, each one believer is the ambassador for Christ. Thank you for showing us the purpose why we were born in this earth at this moment of time. There is a plan, there is a purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing the purpose to all those who are listening to this teaching and making a decision to ponder, to follow the principles of God. Each one has a destination, as a plan, as a purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in helping us to fulfill those desires, those plans, and so that the gospel will be spread throughout the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise God. Today, we are going to see a new topic, being in the presence of God. To dwell in God's presence, to meditate on God's word. What happens when we dwell in God's presence? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. The word dwell denotes a fixed position, not something that occurs then and there. It is fixed. It is not sporadical. You have to abide there. You need to stay there. That is known as to deny, to dwell in God's presence, fixed position. When a, person's, when a person makes the decision to dwell in God's presence means to be focused on God, to be focused on the word. Not only in the, not only in the days of trouble, but also when we are prosperous, and we are blessed richly. We need to be focused on Christ. 
that is known as to dwell in God's presence, to be in a fixed position. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Most of the time, our attitude, our mindset is our mindset, our attitude. When problem hits, when we face a health issue or a child's problem, education, that is the time financial problem. That is the time we search God more. We start to read the Bible more. We dwell in God's presence more. When we are in need, when we want something, we search God. But, but the times when we are blessed abundant, abundantly, when we have everything prosperous, there's a tendency that to forget God, to move away from his presence. This is not what the Bible is saying. We should meditate according to Joshua 1.8. The book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, but shall meditate day and day and night. It's clearly given we should meditate on God's word day and night. We should be in the presence of God day and night. Ponder on God's word day and night. We don't know what the future has. We don't know what type of problems we'll go to, we, we might face what type of issues we might face. We don't know what is going to happen in the future. But the one who's rooted, the one who meditates, ponders, stays in God's presence, meditates over day and night, he has the wisdom to overcome any negative circumstance, situation, any issues. He has God's wisdom in him. So it is more important to be in God's presence day and night to ponder, to meditate. Uh, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Marita, please part. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in, in his law doth meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Praise God. When we read Psalms 1 1, it is not telling us to do certain things, but it is clearly telling us not to do certain things. What are those? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. Do they get the comparison? One one comparison. Amplified classic. Blessed, happy. Fortunate, prosperous, enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of ungodly, following their advice, their plans and purpose, nor stand submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sit down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. scornful and mockers gather. Praise God. This verse clearly said, who are blessed. Those who do not take the counsel of the ungodly. In today's world, today's world, when we are exposed ourselves to media, friends, colleagues, family members, those who are not rooted in the world, when we sit, 
the advice they give is ungodly the advice that, that they give is self centeredness selfishness if if we sit and we, we listen to those advice we ourselves are opening door for curse not stand submissive or inactive in the path of this must walk on it be careful and this verse is telling us what you should not do we are not supposed to have friendship with this world it does not mean that you are not going you are not supposed to help the sinners you are not supposed to talk to them it's not like that you can talk but don't allow them to influence you don't allow their opinions to take control over your thoughts to be vigilant helping is different having fellowship with them allowing their ideas opinions suggestion praise god thank you jesus in families it do happen sometimes parents who are not rooted in the word they might tend to give wrong advice to the children for example for example uh that's as a christian as a believer nominal amount tax should be paid but when we sit or uh, sit along with the if you're getting a good some amount of money monthly business income is high when you sit with the ungodly those who are self centered they will give you a wrong advice not to pay the tax saying that it is your hard earned money you're not supposed to pay tax don't pay the tax no it is it is ungodly if we don't pay income tax when we get a very good some amount of money the other example is bribe as a christian what salary we work that is god who has blessed us with that income to be happy with what income we have but if 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 your spouse of your parents are ungodly self centered they will provoke you they will motivate you to get bribe to get money for some project work or some this work or that work which is ungodly thank you lord jesus thank you father so we should be very vigilant to whose voice we are listening either we are listening to god's voice or we are listening to the voice of this world to be selfish to be self centered if you sense in that advice that your parents or your friends your colleagues anyone give if there is self centeredness if there is pride don't allow such advices to be strong enough to stand on god's word no matter what i'm not going to follow the world system i'm going to follow god's system there are many things there are many things in business uh selling the property uh, doing business very illegally putting high prices and selling the property or uh, cheating people by selling the old stock but when and we come among the family members they say that uh, you should be wise you should be you, you, anyhow see that you sell that that prop, uh, you sell that product don't keep it you need to sell it no 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 matter whether we cheat the people or we fool them that is no matter but we should be very smart that they say, they call that as smart they call that as intelligence but in god's sight when we do anything against anyone we are going against god we indirectly or directly when we harm a person knowingly or unknowingly we harm god directly it is that we are hurting god we are hurting god when we when we are hurting god's creation we are hurting god himself but this world today is not teaching us what is good this world today is teaching us what is self centeredness to cheat others to to use others property to to uh, to to have lust for others goods others things Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
in which if you are being planted among such people you you are supposed to show god to them you are not supposed to follow the world system you are supposed to follow god system stand bold in our say that god is my source i will never ever do this i can't do this i will not do this if it if it if i'm against you let it be i can i can be against you but i can't i can't be against god's word and god's promises it is not that i hurt you it is against god's will when when you are tempted to do certain works that is illegal that is uh, that is against god's standard please don't do that in today's world that is being happening it is being happening in any area in my son's case when he was born uh, there was issue we don't know actually where was the issue what was happening what what problem after the baby was normal the baby's weight is okay at the right month he came up we don't know how he fall sick because of the trips because of the wound that infection occurred at last according to doctor's report that was the thing because of that wound infection occurred sepsis septic shock occurred but before that when, when we see one the doctor who who, who had who did the delivery process the baby was given to the nicu there another doctor was there who was in charge that doctor blaming this doctor saying that she delayed because of a delay only there was breathing problem this happened that happened the doctor delayed the partiality among the doctors and this doctor saying i didn't do anything uh, when the baby was in nicu there that doctor made a mistake he didn't take a proper uh, uh, proper sanity sanitization was not there instruments were not properly used contamination occurred this doctor blaming that doctor no one was ready to take that responsibility why the baby was like that no one was ready to accept their own fault one blaming the other today's world is like that no one is ready to take the responsibility of any mistake done they want to blame others they want to put fault on others they want to escape any field you go any field the world has become so self centered so selfish and god is very clear to to be careful that you don't don't walk with ungodly if you are walking it seems to be wise it seems to be a clever decision it seems to be smart but the end is it is sin to cheat the government to cheat the people to cheat cheat the customer to cheat the client to cheat the patient that leads to death praise god thank you jesus i had a friend she was a christian orthodox christian her father was working in highways department this particular friend she never used to watch any movies she is not in this world system every sunday they are sabbath keeping they keep their sundays they never used to do any work only she used to read a missionary's life and and she used to say her father being in uh, her father was highly positioned an engineer in highways department big a father used to be very sincere straightforward not having any bribe and uh, she used to speak and she used to say that but my father faced lots of problems in the workplace many 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 times he thought why i am doing this job i need to leave this because of his straightforwardness being in that department he never took bribe and that friend of mine used to say that because of this honesty my dad has faced lots of lots of uh, uh, lots of problems they were colleagues against him thank god but my my but she saying that my father set an example for us no matter what you might be insulted you might be 
rejected you might be kept, uh, you might be not accepted with the society but you should not lose honesty god is our provider god is our source and not ever bribe praise god thank you jesus thank you father does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of the sinner nor sit in the seat of the the scoffers scornful mockers nor stand in the path where sinners walk nor sit down where the scornful gather very clearly given not to stand also if you see a person sinner for this part before coming into this world when i was in my college days in my ug and pg sometimes what we sit and we talk not it's not at all godly the discussion the discussions goes ungodly unwanted things lustful talks now when i think i think how we wasted our time speaking unwanted talks that had unwanted thought praise god thank you jesus i had a friend in my ug i will just what are the consequences to be it ungodly to have ungodly talk which leads to death also we had friends we were six or seven of them in a group worldly friends talking worldly things among us there was one particular girl they are actually speaking we did not know that she was having some affair we didn't we didn't know that because we always talking about that boy this like that all talking worldly thing we do not know don't we do, i don't know the word i did not stand according to the word did not tell there was no one to give us a proper advice what is love what is uh, friendship ungodly talk this particular girl she had an affair with a person i we, we didn't i didn't know i don't know whether others know or you i didn't know suddenly one day the news comes that she she has committed suicide she had burnt she had fire herself very shocked to get that news here it was morning around 8 o'clock we are getting this news and i all our six of us ran immediately to the hospital to see her before i went the other four friends came they saw her she was completely burnt she kept fire on her and she was burned completely 90% of the body was burned when i i and the other friend went they said we are not going to allow my staff my my teachers also came they went and saw and when they came out they said no you don't go you can't wear it please you don't go we stay stay here she was fighting for life and afternoon by 12 she died she she was passed away by 12 o'clock then for me it was a very big shock what happened day before we went to shop we went to computer class we were in the college we were spending time she was good she was laughing and what happened to her within a night why did she do this later only we came to know that she she had an affair with a person with a boy and that came to know her mother just beat her locked her inside the room and she made a wrong decision i 
and uh, now i understand that we had long conversations we had talks that are not according to god's word i was not rooted in the word at that time ungodly talks unwanted talks at last this girl lost her life now i'm thinking if i would have been a person rooted in the word god would have used me to guide her to help her to not to entertain such talks avoid such talks that led to let her to sin and the wages of sin is death praise god thank you jesus thank you father and this verse is clearly telling us not to not to stand in the path of the sinner not sit with them <clears throat> it's more important to be rooted in the word nor sit in the seat of the scornful mockers be vigilant be wise enough not to not to sit among the scornful those who mock those who make fun those who insult others those who hurt others those who ill treat others especially especially if if you have relation if you uh, your relationship with your your parents or in-laws your husband or your family members if you sense that they are scornful they are mocking they make fun they they hurt others they ill treat their servants if you sense it please avoid them no problem if they mistake you let them mistake you if they avoid to sit in that presence when someone is teasing others avoid that place if if possible you can say if they are teachable if you can approach you can say god's principle it is not good to hurt a person it is it is not good to hurt a servant if they are not teachable if they think that they know everything it's better to avoid such places it is better not to have fellowship with such people because that that character that scornful character that mocking character making fun ill treating others thinking more uh, uh, having a prideful thought ha- knowing saying that i know everything i'm so smart because of my intelligence because of my smartness i had everything if they if such mindset people are there avoid that place don't fight don't speak back no need to prove your point just avoid it. and let your actions be let your actions speak to them that you are following trust that you are in the presence of god praise god thank you jesus thank you father because such people will poison our thoughts such people will poison the if you if we are in fellowship with such people those who are mocking those who are scornful those who make fun of others those who ill treat others those who dominate others those who take authority over others when we have friendship and fellowship with such people unknowingly or knowingly our character also becomes like that it makes us to become hard uh, our heart becomes hardened in that area we don't we, we don't even think that it is wrong to hurt a person to insult a person if you sense such people are there if you sense such topic is going on in family it happens when all all the families are gathered together sometimes such issues happen it's better to avoid that place not to be in that presence it is wise to move away from that place thank you lord jesus thank you father that i had seen my sister doing this sometimes my dad when he, he used to watch news channels he used to watch sometimes he starts to scroll or uh, is he what is the system that like that any talk happens worldly 
when my sister sends that this topic is going somewhere this is not godly i had seen many a times she never go and say what to speak is wrong or do no 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 she never speak a word she will just get up and move away from the place when she does that my dad said my dad will realize that what he was doing was wrong he realizes i should have not spoken like this praise god and god is very clear to dwell in god's presence is not only to listen to the word to meditate to ponder but to be very vigilant with whom you are having fellowship with what are the words that you are listening what type of communication you have with others what uh, what are you allowing in your heart what types of seeds you allow to be planted in your heart it is also more important and christ is very clear god is very clear to say that do uh, uh blessed blessed is the man who walks and live not in the counsel of ungodly following their advice plans and purpose nor stand in the path of the sinners walk nor sits down where the scornful gather it's very clear to avoid such places in this society in this world majority 90 90 95% of them are under this category if you have fellowship with this world it is not saying that you are not supposed to talk with anyone you can talk you can pray for them you can give them the word of god but be very vigilant that they sh- they are not supposed to influence you you are supposed to influence them but you should not allow them to un- influence you praise god thank you jesus thank you father next verse next verse marita please god next verse psalms 12 but his delight in the law of the lord and on his law his his prospects and teachings he habitually meditates day and night but his delight is in the law of the lord and on his law his prospect and teachings he habitually meditates day and night but his delight to meditate on god's word day and night to delight and desire when you delight and desire god's word full of wisdom full of knowledge full of guidance and in his law the prospect instruction teaching of god he habitually meditates ponders and studies day by day he is like a man planted by the rivers to delight to desire god's word praise god thank you jesus one instant came in my mind and forgot praise god thank you lord jesus thank you jesus praise god i forgot praise god thank you lord okay when we delight when we desire when we ponder when we have the relationship god's word is a, it becomes my companion holy spirit your counselor your teacher the standby your comforter your strengthener your partner is there with you he leads you he guides you he teaches you the word the principles how to stand on god's word what power is there in god's word when we open our mouth and when we speak faithful word we can see we, we can we can see god's power he is like a person who is being planted by the rivers of the water 13 psalms 13 when you ponder when you meditate uh, yesterday i was reading on testimony i just i'm not going into the testimony but a line that touched me in our brain there is a part that is meant for speech that is meant for talk speech and uh, that part that nerve system 
when the, it it is like that that nerve system controls the other nerve system of the brain it seems the what words that we speak words are so powerful god's word is life and uh, i read the testimony uh, that testimony of a boy who was sentenced that he will die and he came to he received the word he came to know the truth and the research was done saying that in our brain there is a the portion that is involved in speech that is involved in talking that has control over other nerve system so when i speak god's word when i speak god's promises it affects my physical body it affects my brain it has control over other nerve system my complete body my complete body is in control my complete body uh, is affected my com- um, my nature changes by the words that i speak and here it is clearly given to delight to desire in the law of the lord and his law uh, it, the 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 plus the 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 the, 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 the passives the instructions the teachings of god he habitually meditates ponders and studies day by day and night if you ponder if you meditate if you train your tongue to speak god's word god's promises it has a, it has an impact it has an impact on our life next was praise god thank you jesus thank you father and i didn't read that book fully i just read that testimony that portion was really touching the speech what we speak has an effect on our whole body in our whole system and it is like a center it is it is an important nerve system that controls the other nerve system matter one three so when we train ourselves to speak god's word when we train ourselves to meditate on god's word when we train ourselves to ponder on god's word we are like the tree planted by the rivers of water one tree can we do this god thank you jesus thank you father Psalms one three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf and shall not wither, and water he do water he doeth shall what sorry whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, and he shall be when a person starts to meditate, renew his mind, speaks God's promises. ponders on god's promises day and night this word of god is full of wisdom is full of instruction is full of guidance is full of strength is full of power when you start to meditate you get the revelation knowledge ask the holy spirit teach me give me the in depth knowledge make me understand the revelation behind the scripture when you ponder when you search for it you are like the tree planted by the rivers by the by by the river by you are rivers of water means what the rivers of water even if there is drought if there is dryness among other area in the interior area the lands might be dried up during summer but the plants that are planted by the rivers of water they are always <coughs> they are always greenish <clears throat> always greenish my husband's hometown is a place where uh, uh, farming is the important main business and richly supplied with water that place is so uh, for soil is so fertile richly supplied with water so we happen to go to a village to a church and i happen to go by the rivers by the river river side so those plants were flourishing very thick very thick uh, branch the leaves were so thick the, it was a uh, cool it was very cool the the whole journey was very cool as coming through all the way 
saw those trees being very, very strong trees were placed. It's very clear that other land area which does not get proper water will dry up. But the tree that is planted by the reverse of the water, when a person is being rooted in the word, meditates on the word, ponders on the word, having fellowship with Christ continuously, when he faces a problem, when he faces a circumstance, he is not wavering, he is not doubting, he is not shifted. He is not, he's not moved by what he sees. He stands strong. He fights a good fight of faith. He overcomes the problem that he showed that he was facing. And it is clearly said that that bringeth forth the fruits in his season. Right time, right knowledge, right wisdom, right words to speak, right solution for the problem. His leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he, he doeth shall prosper. There is no lack. He follow the principle known as sowing and reaping. He becomes a good sower, a person who meditates, who knows God's principle, who follows principle, who has kept God the first priority and following the principle, sowing in the life of others. He'll reap the harvest. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. It is not that we won't face problems, those who are rooted in the word, those who are, those who are uh, planted by the rivers of the water. Even draft, it, temperature increases in every area. And it, the climate changes in every area. But whatever might be the climate change, the plant that is planted by the rivers of water will never ever dry up because there is continuous supply of water. In the same way, when we are continuously supplied with word of God, with the life of God, there is no lack in any area of our life. Health, health, wealth, blessed abundantly in all the areas of our life. Children, every area, children's education, work, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I could, I could like to give one example regarding this planted by the rivers of water. Now, in this period of corona, this uh, pandemic, we see everyone, it is, not that, uh, it is not that this disease is attacking only the so poor or those who are uh, in the slum. It is not like that. This disease, this pandemic is spreading like anything. Every house, every uh, some or the other, someone who has affected by this infection, we come to know the news about that, how people are panicking, how uh, they go into the hospital, not able to breathe, lost their life. We are seeing news, we are seeing family members, it is happening. This situation is for not only for us, it is for the whole world. But when we see how the Christians face it, how believers facing the issue, and how the world system is facing the issue, the one who's rooted, the one who's meditating, even that house, this has happened, this had happened, this infection has reached. But the way they face for it, Marita is also an example where everyone had, they didn't go for test, but the symptoms were the same. They had headache, they had fever, vomiting, uh, the body pain, cough, cold, every symptoms was there. But how the, the house was rooted, the house was planted in God's words, the, the house was ready to fight this battle. The way they approached was different from the way the world approached. In my house last week, we don't know what happened suddenly. Three of my, my sister, me and my dad, three of them got sudden fever ha happened. Then my sister was, she had high fever, one or three for nearly three to four days, high temperature. My dad had high temperature, uh, uh, had vomiting, had everything. But 
the way we should we we uh, we asked her that would you like to go to hospital you want because we are we are not supposed to force him we are not supposed to stop him from any other thing when we asked him he said no 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 i'm not willing to go anywhere i'm not willing to go to hospital i saw my mother being so strong seeing her two children her husband having all all of them having this uh, facing this i saw my mother being very strong no panic no tension she was cool she gave us some uh, some uh, health drinks she gave and uh, she gave homemade herbal uh, herbal medicines she gave us my sister i saw how she was fighting the battle no one knew what was happening to her i was the eyewitness seeing her she was not even able to get up from the bed she was not able to stand giddiness was there she was completely knocked out she was not even able to take a step and she was not able to move but i saw her fighting the battle she was continuously confessing the word healing scripture she was doing healing ministry one saturday she was doing ministry but i i know what was what was happening to her she had no strength to come and sit in the panel and to take but she said i can do all things to christ who strengthens me i was seeing her fighting the battle no one knew what was happening as soon as it was finished she was flat on the bed i was seeing till now she was all right she was okay she was doing this ministry and now what happened she was fighting I saw her fighting the battle fighting the battle with the word continuously she was confessing keeping that keeping that healing scriptures pondering on it meditating on it we never we no one went to the hospital no one took medicine no one did any test praise god but there was no fear there was no fear even my dad was strong enough no fear in him in him because the faith is contagious he is seeing how his own daughter is fighting the battle seeing that he learned to fight the battle praise god thank you jesus thank you father even my in laws had the symptoms but the way because uh, 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 i already said my family is most of them my my sister in law is a doctor my husband's brother in law is a doctor most of my cousins are in the medical field aunts and nurses all of them being in the medical field my mother in law and father in law also they were tested positive my god the panic they had the the stress they had they immediately went to the hospital my father in law but we were praying here nothing happened thank god now he came back is discharged from the hospital but the one who is not rooted in the world the one who is facing the same problem according to the world system fully tense panicking while panicking the oxygen level started to reduce slowly slowly it is being reducing and i am here fighting i i my husband uh, i was talking to my husband and i and he he was in panic he had negative thoughts and i said to him why do you allow such negative thoughts why do you allow satan to take control over you i saw the difference the the, the one fighting the same issue with the word the one fighting without the word according to the world system i saw how both of them come out of the problem praise god thank you jesus thank you father we don't know in future what we face we don't know what type of problems will come we don't know what type of pandemic what is this what is that but the one who's planted by the rivers of water will have the wisdom to fight the battle and the the house built on the rock the house built on the sand the storm is the same the, the wind is the same the problems are the same the one who the one whose house is house is planted uh, houses on the rock strong stand strong the one who's meditating on god's word pondering on god's word when when god said to joshua one night ponder on day and night meditate on god's word day and night be strong be courageous only the one who meditates on god's word day and night ponders on god's word day and night meditates on god's word day and night he will be strong and courageous hallelujah joshua 18 kanta joshua 18 
Joshua Vane. Please, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Marita, you're there? Praise God. Okay, I'll share. Joshua 1 8. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then shall make thy way prosperous and then shall have good success the one who meditates on the book of the law is god's word book of the law is bible uh, shall not depart out of thy mouth see to that Always you speak the word of God. Always let word be rooted in your heart. Always word be planted in your heart. Always open your mouth and speak in God's word. Meditate on a day and night. But thou shalt meditate day and day and night. Thou mayest observe when you meditate it, when you ponder it, when you speak it, you start to release the power. And you start to follow it. You start to do it. You start to work on it. You start to observe and do it according to all that is written therein. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. When we when we walk according to God's word, when we when we meditate and when we do God's word, for then thou shalt make be my I you yourself making your way prosperous. You yourself making the way of good success you're moving towards success praise god thank you jesus this verse clearly says us how to dwell in god's presence means it is not dwelling in god's presence means going and sitting in a chapel and sitting in a prayer hall or somewhere uh, 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 in front, in front of the altar, sitting for a long time, saying that I'm dwelling in God's presence. That is not known as God's presence. To dwell in God's presence means to meditate on God's word, to ponder, to renew your mind, to think, to change the way you speak. When you ponder, when you open, when you speak it out, when you believe it, when you confess it, that becomes your habit, that becomes your habit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. A habit, your habit changes. Your behavior changes. The what the words you speak changes. The way you look, approach problems changes. The way you treat others changes. It leads you into success. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and and prosperity. Success will follow you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You will become a blessing to others. When you go out and reach out and teach others, when we become blessing to others, to the gospel, God has kept someone to bless us, to fulfill our needs. We don't know how, we don't know when, where, but God has kept a person, God has kept people's heart to help you, to help you financially. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. So it is more important to ponder, to meditate, and to dwell in God's presence. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Psalms 91.1. Marita, you are there? Marita, yes, Psalms 91.1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth, dwelleth, I said, to stay still, not to move, positioned myself to look at Jesus. 
he that dwelleth in the sacred place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty when we dwell in god's presence when we meditate on god's word we saw joshua one eight we saw psalms one one two three we saw to delight in god's presence to meditate on god's word is the meaning to to dwell in that secret place thank you lord jesus thank you father most high you uh, under the shadow of almighty you will be under the shadow of almighty no harm will touch you thank you lord jesus even any harm in even any plague or anything that enters in your house it will be destroyed in jesus name thank you lord jesus i will i will say to the lord he is my refuge my fortress my god in him i trust surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the uh, noisome pestilence he shall cover with the his feathers and under his wing shall thou trust his is truth shall be the shield and buckler praise god thank you jesus the one who is dwelling in the presence of the most high the one who is meditating on god's word day and night the one who is walking according to god's standard he is being protected by the most high by the almighty praise god thank you jesus when you ponder when you meditate you are filled with wisdom you are filled with the knowledge you are anointed you are you are healthy you are blessing praise god thank you jesus this verse i had experienced in my life my early times i started to learn started to read that now those were the early times like a newborn baby longing for the spiritual milk for the word pondering on it meditating on it always thinking about god's word rejoicing yourself delighting yourself in the presence of god very happy to know that someone is there who's always take uh, looking over us who's who's taking care of us like a small baby a father taking care of the small child carrying the baby and walking here and there in the same way the father a heavenly father is taking care of us there were many times when through scripture i had i had heard god's voice god speaking to me god knowing my my feelings my emotions understanding what i'm going through helping me through the word through the promises felt many a times god's solution god's god's freedom god's anointing god the anointing was filled in the presence of god the lighting in his presence we lead you will guide you will protect you will give you the guidance will help you to come out of the problem will give you the wisdom how to tackle how to handle what to speak what to not to speak not to take offense not to be irritated not to be tense when you are delighting in god's word when you are delighting in god's presence there is no tension there is no confusion there is no question what happened to my future what happens to that if the job is like this what will happen no tension nothing it can help you to overcome the problem it will help you to enjoy your life it will help you to experience god's presence in your life praise the lord thank you jesus thank you father thank you lord thank you jesus staying your mind especially your imagination upon god not allowing yourself to imagine failure yes when you delight in the presence of god the way you see where you approach life the way you see yourself changes before being born again always the thoughts would be negative this will happen if this happens that will happen if that happens that will happen i was a person like that i was a person like that thinking of so worldly self centered self righteous only depending on my talents only depending on my smartness on my education on my career on my uh, 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 on the income i go i have 
i was a person totally self centered fully under pride self conscious always thinking what next what shall i do well i shall I go for bank exam you know? shall i do for split shall i prepare for this for i prepare for that i was actually in a work i was in a job i was earning at the same time my thought said this job is not permanent any time you will be sent out of the job you need to have a permanent job you need to have a government job government school or government colleges or in a bank or somewhere have government work you have always my thoughts would be what is my future what is my future what is my future what regarding the finan the financial condition of my future always thinking and pondering on worldly things no peace there were times i used to get severe headache no proper sleep only four hours i i get up and do some or the, some or the other work cleaning work washing work studying taking tuition this thing that thing that thing everything i used to keep my time so fixed i was not able to move here and there thinking that i can achieve great things in my life but married i faced an issue even that problem i was not able to solve in my flesh I was not able to overcome the problems that i faced that is the time when i came in the world realize the values realize what purpose we are living realize the power in god's word real change the attitude change the behavior change from self self centeredness self righteousness to other conscious giving priority to others giving priority to your family members denying yourself allowing christ to live no worry no bother about the future when god is with me when god is for me who can come against me no no uh, no doubt uh, not even a single doubt what will happen to my future what happens if this happens what happens if that happens no such thoughts never ever I was childless for six to six years. Initially, yes, it was painful. Later, coming and knowing the word, knowing that the womb, your womb is blessed. You are Abraham, descendant. See at the stars. This is how your descendants will be. That promise is not only for Abraham. Each and every believer, your womb is blessed to bring forth anointed children into this world. No worry. No, no, uh, not bothering. Not. not taking tension not taking this thing the anxiety worry to destroy your life completely in spite of that god taught me to focus on the word to meditate on the word the word became flesh i was blessed my womb was blessed praise the lord thank you jesus thank you father to dwell in god's presence to dwell in his presence to meditate on the word that will change you into another person another personality you can every one of your family members your office they see christ in you they will sense christ in you any issue any problem anyone has any colleague or any friend has she will immediately come to you to ask for solution i did once i said my sister is cool she is idiot she doesn't know anything she's like this they are fooling her they are making use of her this is mind game this is maximizing people there is nothing called all this this is for name sake this is for money sake i kept, i i just put fault on her how much possible i put fault on her i was just pointing out her mistake i was saying that what she was doing is a mistake pointing out her fault came against her but when problem hit when there was no solution when all the doors were closed my talent my experience my this thing and my education everything nothing works nothing can give you solution that time i went to my same sister who my insulted her because i had seen christ in her in same way now it seems that no one is accepting you now it seems that no one is understanding you but they know in their heart that you are straight forward that you are godly that you give only import, you give importance only to god's word you stand on god's word they can see they can sense a time will be they'll come and they'll ask you i also need to experience what you experience i also want to experience the peace that you experience that is the time 
to teach them the principles the word of god praise god thank you jesus thank you father for this teach thank you lord jesus for teaching us how to meditate on the to speak your words with love whole heartedly lord jesus you give us the revelation knowledge thank you for this deep understanding thank you for the promises thank you for the word of god thank you lord jesus for all all the blessings thank you lord jesus for this mission for this ministry for papa jansen and for other team members the warriors thank you lord jesus for all their provision for all their for for their protection they had this their life lord jesus you are you are protecting them thank you lord no uh, uh, germs virus that touches your body dies instantly in jesus name thank you lord jesus no insects no harmful insects can dwell can come inside inside your dwelling thank you lord angels are in charge they protect us the works of the enemies are destroyed in jesus name thank you for complete protection especially those who are among the tribes uh, among ministering among the tough people among the prostitutes Lord Jesus you are there with them you are protecting them you are providing them you are leading them it is your word that is being transforming people's life lord thank you lord jesus for this precious promises thank you for this precious teaching in jesus name i pray amen praise god amen is there any doubt any clarification was it clear Yes, Amen. Praise God. It was beautiful, Baba. Praise God, Mama. After a long time, you joined. In. Yeah, yes. I know. You know, I come from night shift and I fall asleep as I'm listening. Okay. That's the thing. Okay, Mama. You are blessed. You are working as a yeah. nurse, Mama. Yes. Nurse? Praise yes. God. Yes. A very anointed job. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And I do teach the nursing students. and i used to say them what the work you do god has placed you because your work itself there is service and uh, yes to... so rewarding that's right are you a nurse i'm not a nurse i'm not nurse I, but my microbiology i used to teach the microbiology oh okay 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 so, okay praise mm. god Praise I am a nurse. I I used to think that oh, what a wonderful job to spread God's love. And... It is, it is, you know. And when you love it, it's really beautiful. You bring, yes. home, you know, so many gifts and so many. Your heart is full of love. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, God. Thank you, Mama. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thank you, Baba. You're doing such a beautiful job for Jesus. love you Say, love you love you praise god praise god yes god okay is there anyone any questions doubt praise god 